Okay, the recording uh, started. Okay, good. All right, let's uh, take a moment just to pray together. And I'm sure others will join us and we can get started. Uh, could uh, somebody please pray with us together this morning and we will start. Anybody? All right, everyone's very quiet. Uh, who wants to pray? Can I pray? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time that you've given us, Father. Uh, we uh, pray, Father, that your presence abound. Uh, Father, let your wisdom, your knowledge, Father, Lord, uh, your love, your uh, power anointing uh, father be in our midst father uh, uh, lord help us father move forward lord with all the truths that we are learning father lord uh, help us advance father lord not to be uh, father stagnant in our growth in uh, father lord but help us draw closer and nearer to have a deeper personal walk with you father lord and help us live out of the victory a uh, victorious position father that you have given us father lord thank you and praise you for pastor Ashish, lord you bless him father and you give him the words father that uh, needs to be spoken father to be uh, father so that uh, uh, we'll be ministered to father lord i pray for your wisdom knowledge understanding the son and discipline of the lord upon him father i pray for each and every student who is here lord and who are, uh, are yet to join father i commit all of us into your loving hands father lord we consecrate father lord our lives lord for your glory and your purposes father lord uh, in the coming days, Father Lord, may you uh, continue, Father Lord, to empower and equip us, Father Lord, and may your truths, Father, become uh, uh, Father reality, Father, in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good morning, and um, thank you for connecting the class. So. We have been, um, last week, we were talking about um, our blessings in Christ. We were, we were just going through kind of a list of uh, blessings or things that God has given to us in Christ. We were just going through them one after the other. So we're going to finish that today hopefully we'll cover uh, that list and then we will get into a couple of more things that we need to talk about uh, concerning our uh, our identity and our inheritance in Christ and then we will transition in to talking about how to live out of our identity our life in Christ uh, that's the main part and that we're going to kind of close with that. So, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of, you know, just trying to work on these assessments I'm supposed to give for all the classes I'm teaching. Uh, so keep an eye on that. So hopefully I'll get to your classes, this class as well, and get the assessments ready. And, you know, you will have at least a month to finish the assessments. That's last day, this number 26, the end of the no end of November. So you will have time to do that. So uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, we'll get that taken care of. Um, so let me just go ahead and share the PDF. So we were talking about this. Uh, the bless, uh, as the fact that we are blessed in Christ, and we were just you know going through different um, uh, the the list of of blessings, things that we have not yet addressed uh, earlier. So we talked about the fact that God has given, I'm just going to quickly review, God has given us an inheritance in Christ, uh, but we need to learn how to receive that inheritance and walk in it. We, uh, the Bible teaches us that we are qualified to enjoy the inheritance. Every believer can enjoy uh, the inheritance. A part of our blessing is that we can reign in life. Uh, so we 
uh, can walk in authority over things that we were put in subjection to because of the fall, because of Adam's sin. But now in Christ, because we have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we can reign in life. We can reign over those things in life. Uh, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Every blessing that comes from God is already granted to you and me. So now uh, we need to recognize that and say, okay, I'm going to walk in those blessings uh, because it's already been granted to me in Christ. Now uh, we said that we are enriched in everything by Christ. So when you look at your own life, um, think about it that God has enriched me in everything through uh, my being in Christ. Uh, he's enriched me in every spiritual gift as well. We talked about the fact that we are always triumphant in Christ. So in Christ, you can expect to come out the winner in every situation. God will cause us to triumph, who leads us in triumph, or he causes us to triumph in Christ. So that's our posture, that's our attitude, that in every situation we will come out victorious. So to learn to think victory, learn to think triumph in every situation, regardless of how uh, it may appear. Uh, you and we are born to overcome, uh, we are overcomers, and we overcome the world, everything that's in the world, and we overcome through faith. So uh, we, we expect to overcome, we expect to have victory over things in this world. We have the promise of life. Uh, this is eternal life, the God kind of life. And so we live out of the life of God that he has given to us. We are sealed with the spirit. Uh, God has put his mark of ownership on us. And also this, the seal of the spirit is a guarantee, a uh, down payment that there is more to come. Uh, we are preserved in Christ. God preserves us and uh, uh, protects us in Christ. Uh, so God himself is protecting us in Christ. We are established, strengthened, uh, made firm in Christ. And this is where we stopped that. God has given to us an eternal purpose. We are, we are part of an eternal purpose. So God is unfolding his plan on earth, and each one of us fit into that plan. And that our personal, um, what we do in our personal lives, now the call of God on us personally, is actually part of that bigger plan of God. And so in Christ, uh, we are part of God's eternal purpose that he is uh, carrying out on the earth right now. And this purpose and grace is given to us in Christ Jesus. So we stopped here and we're going to pick up from 104. We're going to start from here and move on. Uh, what else do we see as our blessings, or as part of our inheritance in Christ? Uh, we have access to the wisdom of God. Uh, we saw in the 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30. Somebody could somebody read these two verses for us, please. 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, please. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Colossians 2, 3, in whom are hidden all the traces of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Amen. So it tells us that God of him, we are in Christ Jesus. So uh, it's talking about what we have in Christ. And it says, in Christ, who be Christ became for us wisdom from God. So we, we've talked about the other aspects, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, earlier chapters. Uh, here we, we're emphasizing the fact that Christ, that in Christ, Christ himself has become for us wisdom from God. Right? Or God's wisdom has been made available to you and me in Christ. And in Colossians 2 and verse 3, we see this here. 
in whom, that is in Christ, are hidden, or there is this, everything is contained. Uh, what is contained? The treasures of wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and knowledge, treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Christ. And you and I are in Christ, which means you and I have access to the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So what must we do, right? We must learn to draw from it. We must learn to tap into it, right? So uh, uh, we have access. It is there in Christ, and we need that. So, for, for example, you know, what can you do with wisdom? Well, you can solve problems. Uh, you can find solutions to day-to-day -day problems in life. Uh, you can find uh, creative solutions to the work you're doing. Um, you can find, uh, you know, God can speak to you about things uh, that uh, that you know you 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 may not even have knowledge of, but later on you find out, hey, that's something uh, very real, you know. And so uh, we must learn to draw from wisdom and the knowledge, wisdom and knowledge that's in Christ. How do we do it? You see, just a simple prayer. You know, maybe you're about to do something and you say, Lord, I just ask for your wisdom to flow through me as I work on this, right? whatever it might be, you know, uh, you just say, Lord, I ask for your wisdom to flow through me as I work on this. Or sometimes there may be situations you're facing and uh, you may not know what to do. So you say, Lord, uh, I'm just going to pray in tongues. I'm going to just pray over this situation and I ask that you'll speak to me. What should I do, God? And God will speak to you. You know, just recently, uh, I think in the last week or within the last two weeks, uh, there were two instances where, you know, I, I was praying for things. I, I was praying for certain situations uh, in the church office uh, that I needed to deal with. Uh, and uh, in, in both cases, uh, you know, it happened almost identically. I was just praying in tongues and I was just praying. And suddenly, you know, uh, like... Um, an idea, a thought just floated in my mind, you know. And then uh, I, you know, basically the first time I was praying uh, and then this this whole, uh, this, this suddenly this thought came into my mind, like, uh, uh, why don't you have an in-house auditor? So in-house auditor, this came to my mind. And like now, uh, I hadn't even thought of it. I hadn't even, so I went and I Googled, okay, in, uh, you know, yeah, sorry, not in-house, internal auditor. I Googled internal auditor. Then I found out, yeah, that's actually a real role that, that are in organizations. And then I said, okay, so we've got to set up an internal auditor uh, for all people's church here to, you know, to audit all the internal things. And then, I don't know, uh, more, I think it was this last week, I was, again, I was praying about another situation. And then this phrase just went through my mind, you know, vendor services agreement. Oh, okay. So then I went and I Googled, you know, vendor services agreement. And I found out, yeah, that's, that's uh, 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 you know, again, it's kind of agreement that you sign with vendors who are providing you, you know, services. Because that's, again, a solution to another area that we needed, you know. So in both these cases, you know, what I found, what I experienced was, uh, something just floated up in my mind uh, as I was praying in tongues about situation in the church. You know, how do we manage? Because organization is a big part of the church. You know, we need to be organized and so many sweet things are happening. And so I was just praying and then this whole internal auditor came. So, okay, we need to set up that role. And, you know, vendor service agreement. So just yesterday I wrote up, wrote up the vendor services agreement, sent it out, you know, and so we've got to get that signed with all our vendors. So, uh, you know, so this is a very practical thing, right? You're dealing with these things uh, in, in our day-to-day -day work and, uh, you know, how when you pray and you just tap into it. So, God, you know, I, I need I need to know what to do. I need to know how to solve this. I need to know, I need to know how to address this or, you know, take action to, you know, for the organization, etc. And these things can come, you know, and they come just, uh, for me, I believe it's coming from the wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Christ because while I'm praying in the spirit, I'm praying in tongues and, you know, these things come. I like that in different situations. You know, you may be talking to somebody and in your spirit, you just pray, God, give me wisdom. What do I say to this person? And God will give you wisdom. What to speak to that person or your faceless situation. You're somewhere, you know, out on the, 
on the street or you're doing something and, and you're faced with a situation, God, give me wisdom, how to handle this, Lord? You know, so in every situation, you know, you and I must learn to tap into the wisdom and knowledge of God. So God is all wisdom, God is all knowledge. And we need little bits and pieces of his wisdom and knowledge to address different things in our lives, situations. But we can tap into it because we are in Christ Jesus. So simple prayer. Are you praying the spirit? Or you may even read the Bible and God imparts uh, the wisdom and knowledge you need uh, to address life situations. So the wisdom of God, that's part of our inheritance. Um, 105, uh, we are complete in him with his fullness. Right? So let's let's read these two verses, please. Could somebody read Colossians 1.19 and Colossians 2, 9 and 10 for us, please? Colossians 1.19, for please the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Colossians 2, 9, 10, verse 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily. 10, and you are complete in him who is head of all principality and power. Amen. Thank you. So it's telling us here in Colossians 1, 19, in him, that's in Christ, all the fullness, all the fullness should dwell. So it pleased the Father that in Christ all the fullness should dwell. Now the, that word fullness, you know, if you look at how the Apostle Paul uses that word in his letters, uh, it's really talking about uh, filling something up uh, with, uh, it's, it's actually referring to what fills, you know, the thing that fills something up. So here it's talking about the fullness of God. It's, it's, it's the very essence the life, the nature of God himself. So it's saying all of the fullness of God is in the person of Christ. So, so Christ is a full expression of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. So all the fullness of God is in the person of Christ. And once again, in Colossians 2 9, it says in him, in Christ, you've got all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Right? So the fullness of the Godhead, all who God is, is now in this, in, in, is fully expressed or fully contained in Christ. And then it's very interesting, you know, he doesn't pause, he doesn't put a full stop there. It's a semicolon, meaning, look, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this thought is continuing and it's going to affect you and me. It says, and you are complete in him. So obviously the reason the Apostle Paul is mentioning about the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in Christ is because he wants to let us know that that fullness is affecting us and it completes us. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. That means Jesus Christ is above all uh, spiritual uh, authorities and dominions. And that's what principality and power refers to. So the fullness of God, that everything that, that that is contained in God is what completes us because we are in Christ. So how do we understand that? The, the, the word complete means to fill up. You know? So if you uh, think of a, a, a glass or a cup that is half full, if you fill it up, then you're saying you're completing, right? So you and I are completed or filled up with the very fullness of God. That means my strength is completed by his strength. My strength may not reach the full tip of the cup. It may be quarter of the way, maybe half of the way, but the rest of the cup is filled up with his strength or my wisdom. Maybe just you know a little bit, maybe quarter of the cup, or you know three uh, half of the cup. The rest of the cup is filled up, is completed by His wisdom. The fullness of God fills up the rest of it. Right. So that's what it means to be complete in Christ. That means 
I'm filled up with his fullness, with what comes from God. And that's why in John 1 and verse 16, it says, of his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace or abounding grace or grace upon grace. Right? Of his fullness, we have all received. So, you know, a, a God imparts out of his fullness into our lives. So his holiness his wisdom, and, and the list can go on. I just mentioned strength and power. You know, he fills us up. He makes us complete. So every time we feel like, you know, I don't have that much strength. Remember, the rest of the cup is filled up with his strength. If you feel like I don't have enough wisdom, well, you are com made complete by his wisdom. So the rest of the cup is filled up by his wisdom. So you tap into that and say, God, I thank you that I am complete in Christ. I'm filled up in Christ with your fullness, of, with his fullness, with what's in him. I thank you, God, that my strength is made complete by your strength. I thank you my wisdom is made complete by your wisdom. Uh, God, uh, my holiness is made complete with your holiness. You know, if I may be just a little bit in the cup, the rest of it is filled up by him. Right? So we are complete in him with the fullness that's in God. And so in, in, in Ephesians 3, 14 through 19, the apostle Paul is praying for the believers. And, uh, you know, and part of his prayer is, he says, I want you to be filled. Uh, let me highlight this part. I want you to be filled with all the fullness of God. Now he's praying, I want you to be filled with all the fullness of God. What does that mean? See, he's already told us, you are complete in him. And that means this is what God's made available for you, that the rest of the cup is going to be filled up with his fullness. Now Paul is praying that for the believers. Believers, that's what I want you to experience. And of course, he prays for a lot of other things here, for them to be strengthened, um, uh, for them to know the love of God, uh, you know, to know the love of Christ. So he's praying for a lot of other things when he, as he prays for the believers. But he also prays that they will be filled with all the fullness of God. That means practically in everyday life, he wants them to experience what it means to have the rest of their cup filled with the fullness of God. That means, you know, we are only so much, but we are made complete in him with the very essence, the very being of God, with all that comes from God, makes us complete. And he says, you know, I want you to experience that in everyday life. I'm praying that you will be filled with the fullness of God. And... Uh, um, in another, in that, in Ephesians four, he continues to pray. And he says, "I want you to come to the measure of the fullness of Christ." That means I want you to grow up into that, so that Christ can be fully seen in our lives. Right. So, the fullness of God that is in Christ is what is to be in us and manifested in us. So people need to see this: that the very essence of God is. Uh, expressed through us, through our lives. And it's possible because we are in Christ. In Christ gives you access to the fullness that is in him, uh, the very nature and substance of God that's in Christ. We have access to that. 106. In Christ, part of our inheritance is we have, we have a yes to all promises. That means God is saying, look, because you're in Christ, I want you to know that all the promises of God for you, it's a yes and an amen. Right? It's, it's there for you, and it's meant to be fulfilled in your life. Can somebody read this for us? I know it's splitting across two pages here. Um, 
Second Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. Can somebody read that for us, please? Second Corinthians 1, 19 to 20. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has preached among you by us, by me, Sevilius and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. So, thank you. It says, for all the promises of God in him. Right? So, all the promises of God. That means every promise that God has made. God has said, I'll do this for you. I will bless you with this or in every promise of God. He's saying, in him, in Christ, are yes, and in him, amen, or so be it, be established to the glory of God through us. So what Paul is saying is, look, when we preach Jesus, it's not yes and no and maybe, but it's in him, it's, it's a big yes. There's no yes and no. There's no yes, maybe, and no. No. In Jesus, whom we are preaching, there's yes. And he gives us the context. All the promises of God in him are yes and amen. So we need to embrace this truth that because you and I are in Christ, God is saying that in Christ, all the promises have a fulfillment for you. Yes and amen. So that God can be glorified through us. But, you know, people will tell us, well, some if, you know, the promises will happen if God wants. Or sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, and sometimes it's a maybe. Uh, you have to really find out if, you know, that promise is for you and all those kinds of things people will tell us. But, you know, we have to go to the Word and say, okay, what does the Word say? The Word says, all the promises of God in Him are yes and, and amen. Right? And this is for whom? It's for all believers, not just for some. Because if it was only for some believers, then, you know, we'll all have to wonder, is that promise for me or not? But the Bible is saying, all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. And we have to align ourselves to the word. And, you, you know, you and I be convinced that every promise in the Bible is for me. Because I'm in Christ and it's a yes and an amen for me. So that God can be glorified through my life. So I'm expecting a fulfillment of every promise of God. I'm not expecting to get a few promises and be left out of other promises. No, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ, and I am in Christ. So that's our way of looking at the promises of God, and that's how we pray. We pray expecting a fulfillment of all of God's promises in our lives. And no believer is left out of this. The only thing that can leave us out is we choose to not believe and we choose to leave ourselves out of it. But there's no need to do that. All the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. Another part of our inheritance is that we have access to spiritual revelation. It means that we can experience or we can receive a revelation of the truth of God, of the will of God, and the purpose of God. Right? So we have that, that, that revelation or the unveiling of our eyes is available to us in Christ. Could somebody read 2 Corinthians 3.14 for us, please? Second Corinthians three fourteen. 
second corinthians 314 but their minds were blinded for until this day the same will remains reading unlifted unlifted reading of the old testament because the veil is taken away in christ mm. thank you so uh, paul is referring to the people in the old testament and he says you know their minds were blinded so as far as people under the old testament they really couldn't see the truth their minds were blinded and it's like as though there was like a curtain put across their eyes and even though the word of god was being read to them they couldn't see the truth but then he says that veil or that curtain is taken away in christ that means in christ my eyes can be opened so that i can see the truth that's in the word of god so we call that revelation right the ability to have our eyes open to see the truth that's in the word these people couldn't their minds were blinded and so even though the word of god was read to them they were the old testament was read to them they couldn't understand they couldn't see it um, but for us it says in christ in christ the veil is taken away right so you and i can understand the ways of god you and i can understand the truth of god you and i can understand the purposes of god and there are additional scriptures that we can look at so i encourage you to pray you know these scriptures for yourself you know when when you uh when you pray uh yeah let's read colossians 1:9 and 9 through 12 somebody can read that i know it's not printed there but could somebody you know you can open your bible and uh just read that for us colossians chapter 1:9 through 12 Colossians chapter 1 was 9 to 12 For this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light mm. thank you so notice uh, in verse 9 paul is praying what's he praying for the believers he says i want you, i'm praying that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so you you know he's praying for the believers i want you to be filled with the knowledge of his will so many times you know as believers uh we say okay i want to know the will of god and you and i can know the will of god that's why paul is praying you know otherwise his prayer would be meaningless if if believers could not be filled with the knowledge of god's will then it's it's pointless for paul to pray but right now he's in verse 9 he's saying look i'm praying that you will be filled you'll be full of this you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will um in wisdom and understanding that god will give you the wisdom god will give you the spiritual understanding to know his well and when he you knows his well then the rest of these verses follow you know you can walk worthy of the lord you can do what's pleasing to him you can be fruitful in every good work you can keep on increasing in the knowledge of god you can continue to be strengthened uh, and so on right but it starts with knowing his well and as believers we can know his well the veil is taken away in christ our eyes don't have to be blinded to the truth we can know the truth so you know when you read the word of god when you pray to know the will of god remember you have a right to see your 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 eyes have been opened in christ there is spiritual revelation in christ and so you can pray say lord i want to know your will lord what is your will in this matter lord help me to see the truth 
Sometimes you're reading scripture passages. You may not understand the first time. I say, Lord, I thank you for revelation. I thank you my eyes are opened so I will understand the truth that's in this passage. Oh, God, help me to see it. Right? So you have access to spiritual revelation in Christ, and you and I can tap into that. Also, uh, let me pause here, see if there are any questions in the chat so far. Um, let's see now. Is it the same fullness being referred in Psalm 23.1? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, so you're talking about the fullness. Uh, so it's it's different. In Psalm 23.1, he's talking about, um, you know, uh, the needs, the needs. The uh, I will not lack anything. Yeah, so talking about, you know, we can put it as the day-to-day -day needs. So he says, Lord is my shepherd. He will provide for all my needs. Whereas the fullness we're talking about in, you know, in, the, in, in Colossians 1.19 and Colossians 2.9 and 10, that fullness, it's really the very essence of God, who God is, what God has in himself, right? And that fullness is what completes us. It's like his fullness is flowing into our cup. And, you know, we are, uh, you know, what we have, in ourselves, maybe just a little bit, but then his fullness flows into us and we are made complete uh, with what comes from him, whether it's wisdom or knowledge or strength or grace or, you know, it comes from him. So um, the fullness in Colossians 2, 9 and 10 is referring to what's contained in God himself, whereas Psalm 23 is talking about the physical things, you know, and, and, uh, and God providing for his people. Uh, is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, welcome. All right. So I'll just go back to the um, PDF and continue. All right. So, uh, 108. Uh, what else do we have in Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Uh, could uh, somebody read that for us, please? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen. Thank you. So, notice what Paul is telling the Corinthians. Right, uh, he's saying, "Look, I, I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want your minds to be corrupted from what the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity that is in Christ. So, uh, and if you look up, you know what what exactly was he referring to about simplicity?" Uh, it's just talking about uh, uh, being completely free uh, from any kind of pretense and hypocrisy. That is, you don't have to put something on. You can just be free. You can just be yourself in Christ, right? and you don't. You don't. You know. You can express uh, who you are, the openness of heart. Uh, and so he's talking about, you know, in Christ. We don't have to make things complex. We don't have to make things complicated. Uh, we don't have to uh, put on a show, uh, pretend to be something we are not, or be hypocritical. No, the, 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 our life in Christ is very simple. And if you look at you know other places, uh, it's just basically talking about faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. Now he repeats that twice in Timothy, faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. So a life in Christ is simple. We walk by faith, we walk in love. Walk by faith, we walk in love. So that's the simplicity that we have in Christ. And how do you live? Well, I live by faith in God and I live loving God and loving people. And I live by faith in the word of God. I just believe everything that's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. So it's simple. I walk by faith, and I walk in love. 
And he says, I don't want your minds to be corrupted from that. You know, don't, uh, don't take on unnecessary things, unnecessary pretenses, unnecessary uh, sophistications. No, just, just keep it simple. There is simplicity in Christ. We walk by faith in God. We faith, have faith in his word. And we love God. And we love people. Right? So stay with that simplicity that God has given to us in Christ. Then, uh, point 109, there are the blessings of Abraham. So, um, can somebody read these scriptures for us? Galatians 3, 16, 17, and 29, please. Galatians 3, 16, 16, 17, and 29. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and he is according to the promise. Mm. Amen. Thank you. So, what is Paul telling us? See, God made a promise to Abraham and his seed, his descendant. Uh, and Paul is pointing out that God you know, used a singular, he said to Abraham and his seed, and uh, not plural, because in that singular word, singular, he was actually pointing to Christ himself, uh, to Christ himself. And uh, and he says, you know, uh, this was made 400, this promise was made to Abraham 430 years before uh, the um, Moses came, right? 430 years before the law. And uh, God made this promise to Abraham that I will bless you and your seed, that seed is Christ, and therefore, he concludes in verse 29, if you are Christ, and if you belong to Christ, you are in Christ, then what happens? Then you are part of that seed that um, uh, uh, God was referring to, because you are in Christ, and he was actually referring to Christ. And therefore, you and I, because we are Christ's, or we are in Christ, we inherit the promise we inherit the promise given to abraham whatever god promised abraham is now made available to all of us who are in christ because what paul is saying is when god promised to bless abraham he said i will bless you and your seed and uh, that seed he was actually referring to Christ. And because you're in Christ, then whatever God promised Abraham is yours also. Right? So we uh, we refer, just we just refer to this as you know Abraham's blessings or the blessings of Abraham. You know, that becomes available to us. So now if you go back into the old testament and uh, you begin to try to list out, you know, what did God tell Abraham? Uh, that belongs to us. You know, basically God just told Abraham, I will bless you. And I will make you a blessing. And through you, all nations of the earth will be blessed. That's um, uh, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Right? So God said, I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. And through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Right? So God's, when God said, I will bless you, he meant, I will bless you in every area of your life. You know, not just spiritual or, you know, just I will bless you in every area. So, uh, and, and if you look at, uh, you know, the Old Testament, you'll find that God indeed blessed Abraham materially. Uh, with, you know, he blessed him in every way. Materially, spiritually, and so on. So, the blessings of Abraham include material blessings, 
It includes us being a blessing to those around us. Uh, we have righteousness by faith. We have friendship with God. We have victory over our enemies. Uh, and, and everything that God, and when God says, I will bless you, it simply means all who God is, is now made available to the recipient of that blessing. So in Christ, we say, Abraham's blessings are mine. You know, whatever God blessed Abraham, how in the ways and manner, in the manner and ways in which he blessed Abraham, he will bless me. And, uh, you know, with material blessings, with uh, the ability to be a blessing to nations, to other people, uh, with right, the blessing of righteousness, friendship with God, a victory over enemies. And, you know, you, you could go back and look at these scriptures. But these are mine because I am in Christ and those blessings are mine. Okay. So uh, we have a few more things to cover in this section as we itemize different, uh, uh, you know, blessings. We will pause here for now, take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll continue with a few more things and then move forward. Okay. Everyone with me, any questions so far? No questions? Okay. All right. Let's pause here. Please um, take a quick break. We'll be back in 10 minutes, and then we will go forward. Okay? Thank you.